Hello, hello. Welcome to Sunday Night Church at Unity of Faith Church all the way down in Oak, from Okmulgee all the way down to Henrietta is where the building is at. And uh, welcome. This is our uh, second meeting today for the day. And it's our prayer and fasting service. But we're going to do a little teaching and prayer and fasting during the day. You can tune in. We're going to have it We'll have it from the 1st all the way to the 30th, and you're welcome to tune in. We're going to record all the services so you can be with us. Amen. So if you got a Bible, open it up. Father, we thank you for your word. Your word is what's so good. And we think it divides the baby from the grown. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. James chapter 4 and in verse 6, we're going to talk about uh, seemingly the untapped power of God that lives on the inside of you. Your God-given authority. Most people don't even know they have a God-given authority. So they're trying to get God to do stuff, but really the, God gave you the authority to do it. Amen? It's just like a guy that works at a shop. Say he's the foreman of the shop. The owner gave him the authority to be the uh, 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 authority in that shop. If he just keeps running to the owner of the shop, and uh, what's the owner going to do? The owner going to find somebody else. So you don't have to find somebody else. You can go ahead and be the God-given authority and use the God-given authority that you want to. We're going to be teaching that all month. And uh, so prayer is useless. If you don't know your authority, you're just praying in the wind. You don't even know what you're praying for, or what you got, who you do, what you're binding, what you're gagging, what you're doing, nothing. So we'll get we'll clear it all up with the Word of God through the Spirit. James chapter four and verse six. But he giveth more grace. Who's that? God. Wherefore he saith, God resists the proud. Who's he resists the proud? and giveth more grace unto the humble. Who's the humble? That means teachable. If you're humble. Humble don't mean you walk around with your head down feeling sorry for yourself. No. Humble just means that you're teachable. Humble is humility. True humility is knowing who you are in Christ Jesus and operating in the Spirit that way accordingly. Verse 7. Now who's the humble? These are the humble. They're telling you who the humble is right here. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Who's the humble? The one that submits them themselves to God. Not do it their way. They do it God's way. They resist the devil. Now, when you're humble, what can you do? You resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So a teachable person of faith submits to God and resists the devil, and the devil is afraid and leaves you. See that? Now look in verse 8. Draw near to God. Now what does a humble person do? God, I can't pray. I can't read the Bible. Did you know that that is arrogance and pride? That's not being humble. That's being stupid. <laughs> verse, look at verse 8. What's a humble person do? Read it. Draws near to God and will draw. God will draw near to Him. See there? All these things have you in there. Okay, who's the humble? Number six. The humble is the one that submits to God through faith. Verse seven. And what does he do? He resists the devil and the devil flees from him. Well, the devil ain't leaving. I'm resisting. He ain't leaving. No. That's just the devil saying, telling you he ain't leaving. If he can get you to say he ain't leaving, guess what? He ain't leaving. But you don't change. You go right along with what God's saying. Verse eight. Draw near to God. Stick close to God. And he will stick close to you. Then what happens? A cleansing of your hands, sin, and purify your heart. You double minded. So don't be double minded. See that? Now, all month here, as far as I know, God's going to have us be emphasizing something. And uh, don't worry, it'd be good. Have we authority that we don't know about? Do we have an authority 
that we don't know about. I've kind of tapped into it. I got born again when I was eight years old. And I found out that if I'd praise and worship God, I didn't know I'd praise and worship God. I just thought I was singing songs to Jesus. I didn't know it was praise and worship. I started noticing if I start uh, saying praise and worship, I didn't do praise and worship, I just sang songs to Jesus, but I was really doing praise and worship, they call it modern now, nowadays. Just singing praise and worship or just singing to Jesus songs about Jesus to Jesus and how wonderful it was, I'd have a good day. What was I doing? I was using my authority and I didn't even know it. But what's the phrase we're looking at? Do we have authority that we don't know about? I didn't know what I was doing. All I knew was when I start praising and singing to God, no matter how I woke up, good, bad, or ugly. Of course, I was just a little kid, about seven or eight years old. And, uh, but I knew when I'd praise and worship God or singing songs to God, what I called it, I'd feel better. I'd have a good day. And you know what? I'm still doing that. And here I am. I'm far from eight years old now. I know you look young, but I don't look that young. <laughs> And uh, so I'm far from and still doing the same thing. Of course, I hope I've grown some since then. But I'm still doing the same thing. And it still does the same results. You want a miserable day? Just don't sing the praises to God. Just don't worship God that day. Don't read the Bible that day. And what's it do? Look at it. It says, verse 8, Draw near to God, He'll draw near to you. Now, He lives inside of you. That just means you're going to get more sensitive to Him than what already lives on the inside of you. First John 4, 4, Greater is He that lives in you than he that lives in the world. You already have the victory living inside of you. So you're going to be closer to him, be more sensitive to him on the inside. That don't mean you're going to draw nigh to him like he leaves you and comes back and leaves you and comes back. No, he's already in you. He's not going nowhere. You don't go anywhere either. Amen. And then submit yourself to fit yourself therefore to God. What was I doing? When I was singing praises and loving on Jesus and singing songs, I just making them up as I go, you know. I'd hear a half a song on the on a church or a radio or somebody sing, and I'd just put my own version with it and just sing it. Hey Amen. He runs with me. He walks with me. He lives with me. He sits with me. He uh, He's with me all day long, all night long, and I just make up those songs, you know. And you do the same thing. And what are you doing? You're drawing nigh to God. What are you doing? Verse 7, you're submitting to God. What are you doing? You're doing verse 8. You're walking in the grace of God. What are you doing? You're resisting being proud, doing your own way, figuring it out in your own head, and you give grace unto the humble. That means teachable, so I was being teachable. Amen. So that's how you tap into a power. See? And then all through my life, one incident stands out more than a lot of them, but a lot of them's happened. I had a friend that got hit by a train uh, when he was coming in from work. We was all just teenagers. But I wasn't with them. I just I was out hauling hay and belling it up and driving the truck, loaded the barn. And I heard that uh, he was my friend. What was helping me? He was late because the train had blocked the railroad tracks. Finally, he showed up and he told me. He said, "You know, your friend was in that uh, car that got hit by a train." Well, I said, "What did they do?" He said, "Ambulance showed up, took him out of the hospital." Now I was real immature in the Lord. But you know what? I remember when I was seven, eight years old that I start praising or start singing songs to God, what I called it, and then that would lift. See, that would lift. And then I could see what God was saying, speaking, and doing. So I, I couldn't I couldn't get a relief for some reason. Could, couldn't get a relief. Of course, I was around people, around things, hauling hay hot. And I just said, well, i got to leave, and I'll be back. Got my truck, drove to the hospital, they had the life flight out there. His family was there. His wife was there. Uh, he didn't. They didn't have any kids yet. And I was. I was there. And uh, they was loading him up in the in the uh, air, a life flight in Tulsa. And I was just, you know, beside myself. And I was trying to stay over the things of the Lord, but I didn't know enough of the Word to do much. And so uh, I still lived in the natural realm. But I knew about singing. I knew about singing. Praises to God to get you in a different realm. Uh, so I just said, you know, I'm gonna get by myself. I got to get by myself. If I'm gonna help him at all, or even help me, uh, I'm gonna have to get by myself. So I went out to Uncle Bob's house, 
and I had some horses there. And there was a whole row of trees in the fence row with limbs hanging over the pasture. And underneath there, the horses had been underneath those trees so much, it was about that thick of just dust. And I was in there, the whole row of trees, and I was just walking under them trees in the shade. It was hot summertime, like I said, at Bell and Hay. It was a hot summertime, and I just lifted my hands to God, and I just started doing like I did when I was seven, eight years old, and just started singing praises to God and getting me into it. And I got over in there, then I just asked God a question. I said, God, does Todd have to die? And God just spoke to me so clear. He said, only if you let him. I said, well, he ain't going to die then. He ain't going to die then because I ain't going to let him. I didn't know nothing. I didn't know this resist the devil and he'll flee from you was in there. I didn't know Psalms 118 verse 17 says that Todd would live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. I didn't know it. He's still alive today. And uh, I didn't know it was even in scriptures in the Bible. I learned later. You know, God talks to you in scriptures. He may not say thee, thus, and thou like King James, but if you, if you look it up, after a while you read it, you say, God showed me that. He told me that. He didn't. And so I said, well, then Todd ain't going to die then. So I just uh, left, changed clothes, took a shower, went to the hospital, found Todd's room. It's a miracle I even got there. It was way before GPS. I was a country boy driving in a lot of highways in Tulsa. And I thought, well, he's in the pink building. And I said, well, I can see that pink building. I'll just drive over there to it. Well, it's not like that way. Here it's like that. You see McDonald's, you just drive over there to it. But Tulsa's not like that. It's a big city, metropolitan city. So I had to believe God to get there. I didn't know none of the streets. I'd never driven in Tulsa. Wasn't very old at all. Got my driver's license. That's about it. And so I uh, went in there. And uh, his brother came through the hall and said, well, he'd been asking for you. And so I said, where's he at? He told me I went there and saw him. He was glad to see me. Three or four days later, took him home. So what are you saying all this for? Do we have an authority that we don't know about? The answer would have to be yes. I didn't learn that at church. I never heard a preacher or a minister or a Bible teacher ever say, we got authority over death. We have authority over the devil. That the devil's the one killing people. Now, he, I, never, I knew nothing about these scriptures that I'm sharing with you now. I had to learn them. I had to learn them. So I want to leave that with you. We're, like I said, we're going to be sharing and teaching all, all month long along this line. Do we have authority that we know nothing about? So I tapped into some authority that day. It changed my life forever. He's still alive today. See? And I have... I have illustration after illustration. And uh, I didn't know the Bible, but I knew God. And of course, I've learned, I've learned a lot more things. I've grown some over the years, several years. And uh, got scripture to back it up now so it even works easier. You have a good one. You have a great one. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great one.